All right. Hey, everyone. There we go. Mark here, Mark P Markets. Thank you for joining me for another Bitcoin video analysis session. I am streaming on uh, YouTube, on uh, Twitter, and on Rumble. Okay. So if you are watching me on Rumble, just so you know, I cannot see your text. So you should, if you have a question or something, come to YouTube. You can answer, you can write your question there. Anyway, so again, let me welcome everyone uh, and let's get this thing started, shall we? So let me explain to you how the stream works if you're new. First, I'm going to go over the economic calendar as I always do very briefly. Then we're going to talk about this Bitcoin chart and this situation that we're looking at here. All right. And basically update the analysis that I published yesterday on TradingView. And then we're going to take a look at the Trade Scanner Pro script, okay, which is the tool that we've developed recently. Okay, Steen was a big, had a huge hand in that, helping me develop this tool. And I'm going to demonstrate how it works again. Okay, each week, I'm, we're going to see if we can find any trades to take. And I will take paper trades using that tool. Now, just so you know, it's not available yet. Okay, it, it's on, I have, we have it published. It's on TradingView, but only my active investors can get access to it right now. And I've sent out a few invites in fact, um, I don't know if the people that I've sent invites, I don't know if they actually get a notification on TradingView. I hope they do. Otherwise, they don't know that they have it. But uh, I've sent a few invites out. Again, the only way to get this right now is by having the uh, active investor membership over at marketsignalspro.com, my website. Now, let me tell you, before you get all nuts, in a couple of days, we are going to have the, um, the registration process working. And then once we do, then I will make this available to everyone else, okay? And you'll be able to register for a 14-day free trial and try it out for yourself. All right, so with all that, let's get this thing started, shall we? Because I could talk about that stuff forever. All right, so this is for educational purposes only. For investment advice, please consult a licensed investment advisor. All right, now, um, and also if you want to share what city or what country you are, you are from, that's always a fun fact. I'm streaming from the greater New York City area, also known as northern New Jersey. All right. So, um, yeah. So it's good to see people from all over the world here. Now, one thing I want to mention real quick, uh, actually a couple of things. If you're looking for an exchange, right, and you're looking to maybe place trade somewhere else, maybe you're not happy with the exchange you have or you want to try something new, check my links in my description because you'll see Mexi and you will see Bybit. Those are affiliate links, okay? And those are Steen's affiliate links. So when you open an account and you fund an account and you place trades there, he gets a small cut of your trade commission or whatever you want to call it, okay? He gets a small cut or a small fee for every trade you place. Now, that goes a long way in helping him support the community and help helping me build scripts like the one you're going to see here if you haven't seen it yet, okay, which is Trade Scanner Pro. So please consider that when you're considering a, um, you know, an exchange. Now, also make sure you check out the Market Signals Pro website. Again, they're, they're, if, if people are interested in a coupon for the yearly membership on the active investor, just let me know. All right. I mean, I've, that sale is no longer active, but if you're interested, let me know and um, we can talk about that. But what I suggest is that you wait, if you're interested in Trade Scanner Pro, because I've been getting questions about it. Just wait a few more days and you'll be able to get your 14-day free trial going. Uh, okay. Hey, Alex. Good. I'm glad you're here. Okay. I don't see the party is just getting started anymore. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that. But Alex, let me ask you something. Alex is one of the few people here who have access to Trade Scanner Pro. Alex, when I sent you the invite, were you able to receive some kind of notification on TradingView when I sent it? Or the only way you knew was because I told you? How were you able to find it? Can you just tell me that real quick? I hope they send notifications when I send those invites out. So anyway, but Alex is, is, is one of the first people to uh, have access to it. All right. So anyway, all right. So first things first, let's get into the um, economic calendar. All right. And then we'll, we'll go over other things here. The economic calendar this week is pretty light. Now, it looked like from the major reports, you can't remember, Alex says. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm just curious to know, cause I sent out a few invites and some people may have it and not even realize that they have the trade scanner pro. If they don't get a notification, then they don't know. 
right? So um, anyway, so the 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 uh, economic calendar. You should check your economic calendar on whatever platform you use. Okay, I think on you because you told me. Okay, all right, no problem. You should check your economic calendar, right? Wherever you ever have it, and you should get in the habit of doing that every week because. You want to be aware of any major news reports coming out so that you don't get stuck in the, on the wrong side of anything, especially if there's a surprise move and you're like, what's going on here, right? So each week we look at the calendar. Now, I'm only looking for some major reports that come out every month scheduled at the same time. This week when I looked, okay, the only things that I saw that were worth mentioning, because usually economic calendars have a lot of stuff on them, and a beginner may look at that and be like, well, what's important and what's not? Well, this week... We only had tomorrow, right, which is Tuesday, uh, the 16th. We had, um, I think it was the uh, CPI for the British pound or Great Britain or whatever, the CPI report, which, again, that's not a major market mover, but it was on the major market mover list, right? And then we had on Thursday, we have Canada, their CPI report, okay? Not that important. Now, if you look at the lesser important news, I took a look because I'm like, man, there's really nothing going on this week. I looked at the lesser important news and I saw like beige book for the US. I saw like initial jobless claims, things like that. But those aren't major market moving events. So it's okay to ignore them in my opinion. Right? Even as a day trader, they don't really have a big effect. Okay, Like earlier today, we had retail sales and that sort of had a jump pre-market, some sort of jump. But again, that, that's most important for day traders anyway, especially if you're in something that's relative to stocks, U.S. stocks. All right. Um, Powell, I never saw Powell's. Is Powell scheduled this week? I, I, I saw someone, someone else scheduled. But yeah, if Powell is testifying, that's, that's also an important event. But I hadn't seen any Powell testimonies. Maybe I missed it. If, if that, I don't know if you're saying that that's what we look for or if you saw that. But if you saw that, share what date and what time so we know. Okay, cool. All right, anyway. So, um, all right, is, let me see, I don't see. All right, so just looking at the chat here. All right, Giovanni, cool. All right, Alex, and we got P Pariah and uh, Stian. All right, cool. Eduardo's good to see you. Dijon, Kai, good to see you guys. Armin, all right. So that's pretty much it for the economic calendar. Now, let's move along here. And let's get into the chart because you don't need to see my pretty face. All right. Now, how many of you read my trading view article yesterday? Anyone read it? You know, the month, the week before, I had like a huge, like, I had a lot of people that read that one. I was like 30,000 views or something like that. I usually don't get that many. But anyway, I don't, I haven't checked this week's numbers yet. Um, but I usually touch on what I'm going to talk about today. I usually touch on that a day earlier, which is Sunday, right? Now we're going to take a look at this chart because this is what I published on my trading view report. And as you can see here, um, we're in this area and you can see my, my, the squiggle or the, the illustration that I put on my chart was for a buy signal from the range low support. And that was the title of the article, right? Range low buy signal for Bitcoin. This is the range. This is the range low. And we had an inside bar as a buy signal, all right, potentially. Now, we took out the inside bar high. And as you can see, we gave it back very quickly. All right, so we can argue here that the buy signal went into effect at an attractive level, but there is no momentum follow through, right? This red candle should not be red if there was momentum follow through. It should look like this, right? The next candle should look like that, green, something like that, okay? Kind of like back here. Notice this back here, inside bar, okay? Takes out candle high, closes green. That's what you want to see when you take a buy signal, okay? Same here. Look, inside bar. All right, next candle takes out the inside bar high, closes strong. These are daily candles, so obviously it takes the whole day, but these reversals are occurring at a support level, the 64K support level. That's the range low area. Now, right now, 
you know, we look like we're, we're basically failing, right? This thing is not giving us that nice green candle. We don't have the green candle, strong close follow through here. But we have not taken out the support, okay? The 60K support. So we are still in a buy zone. We are still, this thing can still reverse, right? So I would not be quick to short this. A lot of people overreact. Like like Alex just put here, he doesn't see any more. He doesn't see anymore. We're just getting started. Uh, you know, uh, thumbnails, I guess, on YouTube or on Twitter. Because you have to understand, right? Whenever there's a, some sort of bullish market move, everyone talks about it like it's the outlier. Everyone talks about it like it's this. Okay. Everyone makes you think that you're missing this. But you need to understand something. And I keep pointing this out over and over. Moves like this, this impulse move, right, from here to here, moves like this are rare. Put that in your notes. Moves like this are rare. They're outliers. They are not typical. So if you, chances are you're going to miss a move like that, especially if you're looking for smaller time frame moves. Chances are you're going to miss like that because they're rare. Okay, second, if you treat every trade like it's an outlier, you will lose all of your money because you will get caught in something like this. Now, I've been saying since we since we we established five waves, okay, which we with that which was the case. What how long ago was that? March eleventh, March twelfth, around there, right? Five waves were basically established, and I wrote. If you look at my analysis back then, I wrote the party is over. Meanwhile, all your favorite frauds are saying, oh, Bitcoin is going to be at 100K in by next week. You'll see. Okay, I don't see it yet. All right. How was, able, how was I able to know that the party was over? I don't know. But I gauge probabilities. Okay. And when you see five waves complete, chances are that a corrective wave is likely to follow, not higher highs. OK, so that prepares me. That prepares me for not going long and thinking, oh, yeah, this thing's going to go to 80K. Now, sure, it was possible that this could have continued, but the probability played out. OK, and in this game, to be successful, you have to lean on the greater probability. It doesn't mean that it will play out, but what it means is chances are over time, you will more likely be on the right side or at least your expectations will be in line with what is more probable. So for example, I mean, I can't put real numbers on this, but for example, if I could tell you here that there was only a 30% chance that we go to 80K, would you take that bet? I hope not. 30% chance, some people would take that bet. No, oh, it sounds like a good bet. It's better than, you know, 20%. Right, but that means there's a 70% chance that we don't go to 80K, right? So. That's the idea. You want to lean more on what has the greater probability of occurring. When five waves are complete, a corrective wave is likely to follow. So you don't sit there and aggressively go long. You lower your expectations. You take day trades. That's the type of advice that I typically give out or the suggestions that I give out at such levels. Okay. Now, what is going on here? Clearly, it's a consolidation. All right. We have a, cons a consolidation. I took away, I, I, I removed my wave count letters, I had like an A and a B, and I removed that because this is now a compound corrective wave, and they can be very confusing, right? It's like A, B, C, X, A, B, C, Y, A, B, C, Z, like that, that gets very confusing when you have like these corrective compound waves, and you have to put like these X, Y, Z waves, and there's no reason to get confused by that. All you have to do is identify the support, identify the resistance, and you have an idea of what's going on. That is all you need to do. You don't need to overcomplicate this, right? And that's pretty clear in my chart. These levels have been on my chart since March. In fact, these two levels were probably on a little earlier. These horizontal lines represent the previous all-time highs dating back to, what, 2021? January of 2022, right? That's what these two represent. And we have not made progress since we've touched this area, which means the catalyst that was driving this is no longer in play. 
all the ETFs that were going to buy everything up and we're going to be at a million by next year. They stopped buying clearly because we're not making progress. These are retail fools buying this thing at these levels. While, while these big guys who bought early and created this outlier, they sell it to you. Okay, and you buy it because you believe this. If you feel like one of these believers in dreams and and you uh, and you're not able to control your greed, you're the one that buys these tops. All right. Anyway, now where is this going to go from here? That's the big question, right? I see people making all kinds of forecasts. The thing is, no one knows where the market's going to be in the future. We cannot forecast the future. That's the first thing you need to put through your mind. You cannot forecast the future. You can figure out probabilities or kind of guess, right, what the probabilities might be of certain outcomes occurring. And each week, it changes. Each day, it changes. It's not like written somewhere where it's permanently set. That's why I tell people you can't get married to wave counts and stuff like that, right? It's always changing. So you're always evaluating the argument from both sides, right? That's what I do. I'm not always right, but the market is always right. And when the market is right and I'm wrong, I adjust. That's it. Okay. So um, right now, as of now, we are still fooling around the support zone and a long is still possible. A long is still favored, even though this candle looks horrible, right? The current candle does not look good, but that's okay. As long as we stay above 60K, as long as we hold this support, this range still stands, and this range is a higher low, right? It's a, it's a higher low consolidation. Like Alex pointed out that this actually could be a wave four, and we may have another leg higher possibly. And Alex, I agree with that. That's, that's definitely very possible. This entire structure, this wave five, could have just been um, the completion of a broader wave three, right? This is where wave counts could be confusing, but we don't need to get into those bigger picture wave counts. All we have to do is know, okay, wave five, some kind of corrective wave. Maybe this corrective wave is a wave four and maybe we break out at some point and maybe that becomes the wave five before we see a real corrective move. I don't know, okay? But if you're following wave fours and wave fives, more, more likely than not, you at least your expectations will be in line what is more likely to follow. So as long as we stay in this higher low consolidation, it's still okay to think on the bullish side, okay? Um, as of now, though, we don't have a new buy signal, right? The buy signal that went off yesterday is basically failed. So if you're long this thing, you really shouldn't be losing more than 2,000 points, right? And I mentioned that as, as a swing trade, 2, 000, risk 2,000 points to try to make three or 4,000 is a reasonable swing trade, okay, on the daily time frame. Now, if we take out this inside bar low, which is 62,162, all right? We take out this inside bar low. If we do that, that increases the chances that we're going to test 60K and possibly break. That's an aggressive short. Aggressive, because you're short. if you short that, you're shorting it into a pretty heavy support level, okay? So please keep that in mind. It's not something that I would recommend, especially for beginners. So at this point, as long as we hold 60K, even if we get that break, I'm, I'll be looking for the fake out, right? The bullish fake out, some sort of bullish pin bar, another inside bar, something, right? Take out the high of that. And then I'm eyeing basically this area, this resistance area to measure the take profit from. Does that make sense, you guys? Now, while you guys are answering that, I'm going to go back and see what people are saying in the chat because I haven't, I haven't been looking at the chat here. So let's go back here and let's see. All right, Malad from New York. How are you, Malad? Good to see you. All right, cool. ZN1, very important moves, Alex says. Okay, Alex, we'll take a look. Okay. Uh, we got Monica from London. Hi, Monica. Oh, dear. I haven't done my British accent in a while. Oh, dear. Hello, Monica. Okay, that's, that's enough for my British accent. Oh, dear. Okay. Isaac, good to see you. Good to see you. No problem. Okay. So, no, Giovanna, this is not a C wave. This is a compound corrective wave. So, that's why I took the letters away. They get confusing. It, it can be, an, it, it, you, you can have like a, it's possible to have a motive wave where the letters basically go from A to E, but I don't know about that, right? This could just be ABC, ABC. I'd rather not get confused and I'd rather just look at it as just a general correction, a general, a, a general consolidation. And as long as range low holds, 
I'm looking for buy signals on this time frame. Okay. Dijon, I got information from Channing View on the mail about the script on April 10th. Um, after presentation, it says I could. Okay. So, so what you got, Dijon, there, thank you for mentioning that. Dijon, what you got there, that's when I published the script. So everyone got a notification about the script publication, but the invite is something else, right? The invite is something that you should see, like you should be able to click on your on your little button up here and you should be able to see it like on your list. If you go to invite only scripts, you'll see it there and then you click on it and it puts it on your chart, okay? Um, yeah, okay, all right, so... Oh, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, the stock market's been pulling back a bit. Let me just go back. I'm just looking at the chat here. I mean, these five waves making a bigger wave three. Okay. Are you saying that all retail investors are, have can't have con in? I'm not sure. Well, no. Look, that's just a figure of speech. But I, what I'm saying is all retail and, you know, the, the, the active participants, the majority of them who, who are going to be active right now are in. That's what that means. Now you could say, but the whole world is out there and billions of people can buy. You have to understand something. This rally was not driven by retail to begin with. This was an institutional rally. Retail has no money. Retail only has money when interest rates are low and everyone has extra money. This is not a retail rally. This is an institutional rally. It was. And then they, they get all the retail traders all excited, the ones who do have any money, right, that are going to try to trade this. They all buy up here, all right? But this was not a retail rally, in my opinion. This was purely driven by the institutions and retail traders don't have money, all right? This is, this is not one of these asset bubbles that comes from low interest rates, which is, which is what I was looking at the whole time, low interest rates. And that's why this rally completely caught me off guard because I was expecting low interest rates for an asset bubble, not you know a couple of ETF funds or whatever decide to get together and decide to buy all the bitcoin that they can i mean that's that's collusion if you think about it all right anyway um are you saying okay can you say retail investors have come in yeah so i think that they've, they've all been lured in at the top my 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 wife's name is wave count and you <laughs> yeah i know kai kai perhaps you should see a marriage counselor about that all right. I'm, I'm not a marriage counselor, nor am I a family attorney. Maybe you should see one of those people. All right. Uh, Glenn Rock. Oh, cool. I know where that is. I'm not far from there. Glen Rock. That's, 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 that's Bergen County. You're a little north, right? Glen Rock. Uh, retail was not right. But they will once, right, and usually retail piles in at the worst prices, right? And that's when all the fake gurus come out, right? The fake gurus, I mentioned them because usually they're a sign that a top is near. They were not calling Bitcoin here, okay? They weren't even getting that excited about Bitcoin here. They get all excited when Bitcoin is up here. That's when you see all the YouTube videos coming out. That's when you see all that nonsense, you know, uh, Bitcoin is, is going to the moon, blah, blah, blah. You see all the rocket ships on the thumbnails and it's just getting started. And then the thumbnails of Michael Saylor coming out saying he's buying more and you should own Bitcoin. That's when you see all that nonsense. And that's when people mindlessly buy, okay? And you buy at the worst prices. So, you know, again, if you just follow simple things, and that's one of the things that I try to impart here. I try to teach people. If you just follow support and resistance, and trend. If you just follow that, which is basically price structure, if you follow that, you will be in better shape than most people because it should give you a gauge of when risk is too high and when risk is more reasonable. But risk, of course, is going to be defined by you. How much risk are you willing to take? Right? I am more risk adverse. I like lower risk. That's what I like. And we are now in lower risk territory, at least temporarily. This relatively speaking, is lower risk because it's the range low of something that's generally bullish, okay? So I'm open to longs here, and longs in this area have more potential because a test of high, or at least the 68K to 70K resistance, is within reason, right? So there's this decent potential based on, you know, what I look for on this time frame. But other than that, you know, people that buy at these levels that look for these breakouts, 
are taking extremely high risk. And that when you do something like that, that's when I suggest, well, put on a day trade. If you're wrong, you don't get caught in something like we are in right now. If people got in here and they're like, oh, it's going to go higher, and they don't put out a stop, they don't respect the stop or whatever, right? They start out maybe as a day trade and they're like, yeah, 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 it'll be at 80K and I'll be, I'll be rich, right? Blah, blah, blah. And then they get caught in this. They're like, I don't understand, right? And now they're stuck in this thing. And now they're at the mercy of the market. Right. And if they use if they've used leverage, right, and this thing decides to test 59K briefly, even if it's for a couple of minutes, and then reverses back up hard, you're knocked out because you're leveraged out of your position. Right. The exchange closes your position, and then you watch the market bounce and you're not in it. It happens all the time. Okay. You don't want to be one of those people. Those are people that react, people who can't control their emotions, people that cannot control their greed. They're, they succumb to their own greed and their own fear. Greed and fear are what drive markets. You have to be able to look at that from the outside, and that's when you're able to recognize opportunities, right? Basically, as a trader, you, what you're doing is you're capitalizing on the mistakes of others. That is what we do as traders. I mean, that, that's the way it is. It's sad, but that's the way it is, okay? Uh, me and many, many others heard about BTC February 21 and BTC reached, oh, okay, right, 50 or 60K, right? See, Alex is on top of it, okay? Um, Alex is on top of it, but that's true. That, that's definitely a, a true thing, right? That's when you hear about it. And then it goes from 69K to 15K, and everyone's out by then. Okay. And then, of course, you know, we're back to 70K, which was a very unprecedented move. Now, you know, we're looking at this chart here, and people tend to look at these smaller time frames, right? This is the daily. But you should get in the habit when we're in a situation like this, you should do this, right? Go to your monthly. This is the monthly Bitcoin. Okay. You see this? That's the monthly. The, this is what I mean by outlier. This is an outlier. This is unusual. We haven't seen a move like this on, since 2020, right? Now, back here, this was a retail move. Why? Because that was instigated by low interest rates. Remember? And stimulus checks. Remember? Okay. So this is not a result of low interest rates, which makes it even more suspect. Anyway, look at this candle right now. I mean, we're still in the beginning. This is a monthly candle. So you have the whole month before this closes. But if this takes out the previous month's low, that's certainly not a bullish sign. If this closes like this, and we take out this low, I mean, we may be in a more substantive corrective move, okay? A substantive corrective move can easily go here, and that's not even bearish. That's just a normal correction, right? Look, you could draw your fibs on this thing and do this, right? You can do this right here. And this area right here is not bearish. That's just a normal, healthy correction, that's all that is. Now, you better believe people are going to go nuts and say that that's bearish and that we're in a bear market and blah, 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 and we're going to zero and this and that. You're going to hear that, okay? But I'm showing you the perspective here, all right? I'm showing you the perspective. So you should not be thinking that. You should be like, oh, okay, this is just a normal, healthy correction. That would be a good investing level, all right, for those of you on, on the longer-term investing. Now, it doesn't mean that it's going to reverse at that 382, but that's, a good, that's typically a good support area, typically. All right, it may test lower. It may pull back even further. That's why you don't sit there and you don't you don't put all your money in at the same price. You that's a situation where you begin your dollar cost averaging, but you start small. Okay? But you could be a slightly more aggressive there because it's a low, it's not a high, right? You're not buying the high, you're buying the the possible low of the of the corrective move. All right, but given that the rates will start well and having which follow Okay, so this is an interesting thing. Right. Chairman Powell has he has um, hinted or whatever he said in previous speeches that he's going to cut rates. OK. Um, and having for which is followed by a short consolidation period, maybe we can assume that this is institutional rally is is I guess you mean is still is still on P possibly. I mean, low rates are, are good for the retail investor. Now, so let's take a quick look at, at interest rates, right? So I'm going to go to um, uh, ZN1, right? These are the bond futures. I haven't looked at these in a little while, 
Let's go to the weekly chart on the bond futures, right? Now, this here, these are bond prices, right? And bond prices are inverse to yields. Yields are the interest rates. This is the 10-year note. So look at this, right? Pr prices are going lower. We broke the support over here. That was a higher low support. Broken. These are weekly candles, right? Broken. Rates are rising. And Powell says he's going to cut rates. Okay, well, I don't know. Market's pricing in rising rates because rates are rising. That's what this means. If we test these lows right here, that means rates will be back at their peak. That's what that means. Okay, so rising rates is bad for the retail trader. Now we have a we have a we have an inflationary problem here in this country. The CPI reports keep keep coming out too hot and all this other stuff, and everyone acts surprised. I don't know why they act surprised. All you have to do is go to the supermarket. And you'll see prices have like doubled and tripled. It's like ridiculous. Our dollar is worth toilet paper almost. I'm exaggerating, but you know what I'm saying, right? I mean, costs, especially in some cities, have more than doubled, okay? The cost of living in some of these cities, people can't afford this stuff anymore. We have an inflationary problem. So this is, rates are rising, but Chairman Powell says he's going to cut rates. It's very conflicting. So not sure what to make of that. All I know is I don't trust what people say. I follow the price. Price doesn't lie. Okay. People lie. The price doesn't lie. This says rising rates, right? So even though he said he's going to cut rates, this does not look like he's cutting rates. At least the market doesn't think he is or something. I don't know. The market says rates are rising. That's all I can tell you. And if we take out this low, rates will be at new highs. High, high rates, rising rates are bad for all of these regional banks that hold these bond positions. Just something to keep in mind. Now, the, 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 the current administration has successfully bailed out a number of banks and has prevented you know, a financial situation successfully because we were running into some bank problems not too long ago, which everyone has seemed to have forgotten. But if we start taking out these lows on this thing, that's not, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised to start seeing those popping up in the news again. Okay, you guys, you guys clear on that? All right. So that's the that's the 10-year note. Let's take a quick look at the stock market real quick. And then we're going to talk about the trade scanner. So let's go to SPX USD. This is the CFD of the SP 500. Okay. Look at this. Now, this market, the SP has been ridiculous to say the least. Ridiculous because it doesn't pull back. This goes back to November. Look. That was a November low. We have been in the Santa rally until like this month. Okay. I mean, this is nonsensical. Like it just doesn't pull back. And there are a number of reasons. Obviously, when you're, when you're facing inflation, assets, asset prices rise. I mean, S&P obviously are asset prices and they rise. Gold has been out of control, right? So that is an effect of that, obviously. But if rates rise then that, that should put a halt on, on this kind of thing. And look, we've broken some important supports on the S&P. We haven't broken supports in a long time, at least November. I mean, that, that's quite some time. Let's take a quick look at the weekly chart on this thing, okay? I mean, look at this. That's ridiculous. Week after week after week after week after week, no pullbacks. That's unusual. That seems to be engineered. I mean, look, I'm, I'm, yes, I'm Mr. Conspiracy Theory. This is just unusual. So, I, you know, when I trade, I deal with the S&P a lot and I deal with the NASDAQ. I don't let these opinions get in the way, right? If the market wants to go higher, go higher. The market's right, not me. It doesn't matter what I think. It doesn't matter what my opinions are. It doesn't matter how many conspiracy theories I have. If the market wants to go higher, I stay out of its way, okay? Or I try to get along with it. If the market wants to go lower, I don't care why. It just, that's what it wants to do. I trust the market. That's what it wants to do. And I try to follow it, right? I'm a follower. I'm a market follower. I don't impose my ideas on the market. I don't fight the market. Like I've learned a long time ago not to fight the market because I've fought it many times <laughs> and I have yet to win. So you don't fight the market, right? At this point, you know, we're breaking supports and we haven't seen this type of bearish activity for quite some time. Now, keep in mind, these bearish situations are seasonal, right? Typically, October is a, is a seasonal, seasonally bearish time. And March, April is typically a seasonally bearish time. So this makes sense to where we are now. We have to see how this goes. I mean, today is Monday, and this is where we are on Monday. 
right? So that's a pretty steep move. Um, where's the next support in the S&P? Probably around here somewhere, okay, which is 5043, which I guess you could say is the 5,000 level on the S&P, on the CFD. The actual futures number is slightly different, but you get the idea. Okay, um, what are you guys saying here? I've heard that when rates, as we historically see dumps, why? Because of the reason for the rate cuts. Well, yeah, I've heard something like that too, right? Rates get cut and then the market suffers, right? Because I, I guess, I'm, I'm not sure exactly why it works that way, but this historically, I'm sorry for the, the lawnmower. Historically, when you're dealing with interest rates, right? And rates are cut, Rates are usually cut because we're having a um, hard time. Like usually the economy needs stimulation, right? That's usually why the Fed cuts rates. Money's tight. You know, no one has any money. Uh, the economy is very slow. There's no growth. So to stimulate growth, they cut rates. Usually in those situations, we don't have inflation. We don't have an inflationary problem. That's what makes this unusual, Alex. We have a high inflationary problem right now. So lowering rates now means wheelbarrow time for our dollars. I mean, that's what that means. You better own gold, at least in this country. I don't know about Romania, but, you know, a dollar is going to go to zero. If that, that's how what I say. I could be wrong. But, you know, I, I'm this whole situation, by the way, was was instigated by the government expenditures not the lower rates, which is usually what I'm used to. In all the years I've been this, it's always been interest rates that lead to an asset bubble, not government expenditures or, or what, do they call, what do they call that? Uh, fiscal fiscal expenditures. I don't know. That, that part has really got me thrown off. But anyway, uh, that's another story. Um, Powell, from what I read, there will be rate cuts this year. Wait, say not say there will be rate cuts this year. Only if incoming data supports. It. Oh, okay, Kai. Well, thank you for clearing that up. All right. I thought he said he was going to cut rates, but you know, again, I I come across this fake news, and sometimes I I even I believe it because I don't pay attention to news much. But um, okay, thank you for pointing that out. All right, you guys. So let me just let's put Bitcoin back up on here. Okay, and actually, so so that's pretty much it with the with the Bitcoin analysis and what we're looking at with the bigger picture stuff. All right, we can talk on. It's 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 harder here. Okay. 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 So you guys are saying he never officially said. Okay. Okay. Thank you for pointing that out. Um, rate cut. R rate cuts at at point R. Desperate attempt. Right. Which is why there are dumps. Okay. So so Kai is explaining here why you know when a rate cut now depresses the market because it's a desperate attempt to I guess you know, uh, stimulate things because things are bad, basically. If he's cutting rates now, things are a lot worse than, than originally thought. I guess that would be the, the rationale. All right. The only currencies that are going to go to zero even faster than the USD are all the other fiat currencies. <laughs> I guess that's true. Right? I mean, we are still the world reserve currency. I guess it affects everyone. If we go to zero, the other ones are going to zero first, I guess. You know, but um, anyway, so that's why in these situations... You know, I'm not one of these, you know, gold guys. Oh, buy gold because gold's going to be at a million, all right? Let's take a quick. I mean, look at gold. This is gold, all right? Well, gold right now is at 23.87. It was as high as 24.31. Wow. So that tells you something. All right. Anyway, let's let's get back to Bitcoin, all right? And let's put here the Bitcoin perp, all right? Bitcoin perp, which is the perpetual futures. And we'll put MEX C on here. Okay, so here's Bitcoin perpetual futures. Right now, we're going to switch this to a one minute chart. Okay, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to I'm going to uh, let me see. Okay, hold on a second. I'm going to I'm going to put the uh, I'm going to oh, actually I get a better idea. Hold on a second. Let me just do this real quick. I'll put the screen back up here in a moment. Can I do it here? Okay, here it is. Here it is, All right? So this here is the Bitcoin perpetual futures, right? 
And we're going to go, this is a five minute. Let's go to a one minute on Mech C. Now, here we go. We got something here. Let's see what this is. Can I put a trade on? Notice these lines on the chart. This is Trade Scanner Pro. This is the script that's available, you know, to my active investors right now. Oh, it actually almost touched the trailing stop, right? So look at this. It called a short. Check this out. So here's how this works. And I'm going to put this trade on right now on paper. All right. So I'm going to short two contracts and we're going to watch how this thing goes. Okay. So what's going on here? The Trade Scanner Pro, right? Just to let you know how this works. First of all, it's it's the Trade Scanner bot that many of you may be familiar with, but it's a script that you can put on your trading view charts like you can see here. And what it does, because people say, well, how does it work? It produces the order suggestions on your chart. That's what these are. These are not support and resistance levels. These are order suggestions. So it says get short at this blue line, which gives you the price, which is 63,328. It gives you a take profit, okay, which is the green line. And it gives you a stop loss at this price here, which is the red line, 63,601. So it takes all the guesswork off your plate. You don't have to wonder, where do I get long? Where do I get short? Where do I get out? How do I trail this thing? What do I do? It takes care of all that for you. Now, mind you, this is not a good time to be trying to trade this thing. It's almost 4 o'clock in the afternoon, Eastern time, here in the U.S. And um, usually there's no momentum at this time. It's usually the market's about to close. You see, like this trade is not working very well. It's going to go to the stop. I shouldn't be that surprised. You don't get much follow through going into 4 o'clock usually, or it's usually very risky. Right. The best times to trade something like this are going to be the U.S. market open. You know, see, look, we got stopped out. That was quick. But on a one minute chart, that's going to happen. I'm going to get out of this thing now. Um, it, this this usually will vanish once it once this candle closes, this will vanish now. So this is a one minute chart, which is not one that I recommend for beginners. You really should be like on a two minute or a five minute or something less something greater than a one minute. Because this is going to happen a lot, right? This type of stuff, right? This kind of noise. You see that? Going right through the stop. I'm out of this thing, but I know where to get out, okay? I'd like to see a winning trade develop, but it's going to be hard at this time. Let's look at like a three-minute chart. Is there anything there? No. Let's look at a five-minute chart. Anything there? No. Um, how about a 15-minute? There's some kind of trade here. Let's see. What's this 15-minute? Oh, the 15-minute call. Wow, they called the short here. Look at that. And it got stopped out. So I don't know why it's still in the trade. And it touched, it touched the stop. This trade shouldn't be here. But um, maybe that's fixed on the update. Steen sent me an update on this thing, which I have to push to, to everyone. But anyway, so let's get back here. And let's look at this. Because I want to point out what these things do. If you see, you can see here, if you go to the setup panel, right? You go to the panel on, on the Market Signals Pro. Oh, because the trailing stop is active. Thank you. All right. If I take that off, it, the, the trade will vanish. If you see here, this is the settings panel for the, the Market Signals Pro script. As you can see here, I have this thing click called heads up. I have the trailing stop, which I'm going to take off. Okay. I have counter trend, which I'm going to leave off. And show trend gives you this little trend label up in here. And as you can see, I'm going to leave it like this right now, right? This is basically how you start out with it. Um. You'll see up here, up here in this area, it says trend bearish and then it says conflict. Okay, conflict means that the price action right now is going against the current trend, right? Because conflict means it, it sees that the trend is bearish on the one minute, but conflict means it's looking at this bullish price action. So it kind of gives you a warning when you see conflict, okay? In a situation like this, you won't see conflict. Now, the other thing you'll notice here are these orange candles. See these orange candles that are popping up? Like, what are those? These orange candles, that's what I call heads up, right? So if you go back in here, you'll see heads up, right? If I take it off, the orange candles will go away. I put it back on. It says heads up. Heads up is a pre-warning. It's a pre-signal warning. It means that a signal is likely to come up soon. So it doesn't mean you jump in and take the trade because, like, this can happen, right? But it means that over the next few candles, 
a signal is likely to develop. So it gives you a heads up. So instead of sitting here and like, when is a signal going to show up? Then, you know, you kind of have an idea. So to use this thing, really the, the first skill that you really need to have is to know how to wait. Okay. That's really it. I mean, anyone can learn how to wait. You're waiting for a signal to pop up right now. I don't recommend that you sit in front of your chart waiting for a signal like what we're doing here. What you can do is you can actually go here, right? You can set up a notification like on this menu here, right? And then you, you click on the Trade Scanner Pro. And now when a signal pops up, this thing, you can tell it where to give you the notification. You could say, okay, show me a pop-up, send an email, a webhook, which you're probably not going to do, um, or play a sound, right? So you can set that up. And when a signal appears, you'll get the notification on your smartphone, on your tablet, on your desktop, whatever, which means it frees you up from watching this thing, right? Go about your business. Go do something else. Go grocery shopping. Go watch a movie. Steven likes to watch movies when he's watching this thing, right? You can do something else, and you're waiting for a signal. Now watch. This candle closes. We're likely to get a signal because, look, I have, a, I have an orange pin bar. In fact, I'm going to take the trade early because of that pin bar. I don't recommend doing this, taking the trade early. There's the trade. <laughs> okay, so the orange warned me. I got in a little earlier. I could have. Now, I don't recommend getting in on the orange candle unless that's extremely aggressive, right? Because if you had done that, you would have been wrong over here. But I got in a little early. The whole idea behind that is if you get one contract early and then the signal shows up, you can add. So, in fact, I'm going to add. I'm going to sell another one here. Okay, so now I have I have four lots on, okay, um, two two per trade. Normally, what I would do is I would do one, right? I would short one, and then I'd short the second one on this signal here, on the actual signal. Now, everything is laid out for me, my take profit and my stop, all right? There's nothing else for me to do but let the trade do its thing, right, and manage the trade. Now, if I get some conflicting signals on a one minute, again, it can be very noisy, then, you know, I can get out early, like, and I'm just showing this for demonstration purposes. Usually like on a five minute chart, you don't have to be so on top of it. Okay. Or on a 15 minute chart, but understand on a five minute or on a 15 minute trades will take um, longer to show up. You're know, like on a five minute chart, for example, you may only get, you know, three or four signals for the whole day and they may be hours apart. So you don't want to sit there waiting. You just set up your notification. And then it pops up and then you have your orders. You do your thing. So do you guys see how this works? Let me know. Like, do you guys like the way this looks? Give me some feedback. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put the trailing stop back on. Right? We don't see it yet because we don't have enough candle closes. But after a few candle closes, you're going to see an orange line show up over here. And that's the visual trailing stop, which automatically begins to reduce your risk. Right. If you if you respect the stop. Now, it's very important that you respect the stops. OK, if this thing goes to the stop, just get out. So. Just to be clear, when we are. So so this is for active investors, Isaac, right right now, active investors have access to this. If you give me your trading view username, I don't know if Isaac, if you're an active investor, are you an active investor? I can't remember. I know you're a member. If you're an active investor member, just give me your TradingView username, and then I will send you an invite. Okay, and you'll find your invite in the in this little tab up in here. Okay, so so just send me send me your well actually I could what is your TradingView username? Just tell me what that is, or you could send it to me, and then I'll send you I'll I'll send an invite to you. But you have to check because I guess Alex told me he hasn't seen um, any uh, what do you call it notifications. So I don't think you get a notification. You have to check your you have to check your tab up here for your tools, and it'll tell you invite only. And you click on that, and it'll it'll show it to you. Okay, um, yeah, you could do that too. You can add it to your profile, and then I could say up, or you could just send me a private message. So as we're watching this trade fool around here and waiting for the trailing stop to show up, um, let me mention something. If you receive a message from me, a private message on Discord or on Twitter or wherever else, it's not me. I don't initiate private messages, okay? So people, there are scammers that watch like my streams and then they try to take advantage of unknowing people and they say, oh yeah, they, they, they impersonate me 
And then they'll send you a link and they'll say, oh, yeah, here's the thing you're looking for. And then you buy it or whatever, and it's not the right thing. You, you've been tricked. Please don't let that happen to you, okay? If you get a message from me first, it's not me. If you send me a message first and I respond, that's another story. That's usually how I do it. But I do not initiate messages. Please let that sink in. Please take notes. I don't want you to get fooled. I don't reach out to people. I don't do it. All right. So please don't be fooled. All right. You can reach out to me and I will respond to you on all any of these platforms. And if you see it, mention it and, and also report them, report them to the platform so that the platform can do something. There was a guy on Twitter that was impersonating me for a while. I don't know if he's still there, but you know, hopefully Twitter removed the guy. A number of people complained. Please report the guy, block the guy and you know, and, and please protect yourself. Okay. Um, yeah. So Isaac, whatever is easier for you, you can private message me, you can put it on the website and then I'll, I'll, I'll set this up for you. Okay. I'll, I'll get it done like tonight or something or early tomorrow. I just don't know how you get notified. All right. So there should be a notification somewhere on trading view that you got this invite, but I don't know where that is or how that shows up. And that, there's a bunch of people that I, that I set and they, they probably don't even know they have it. Okay. Um, like is Sean. Sean here? Because I, I set him up. I don't see him here. Okay. Well, so Mr. Plow, you asked, where are the alts going? Well, if Bitcoin is pulling back, you know, typically the alts follow. Typically, right? Not all of them. Some of them have their own little hype machine going on. But if Bitcoin is, is pulling back, I would watch the total three or the total um, uh, symbol. And that pretty much will give you an idea. It usually looks very similar to Bitcoin. So if Bitcoin breaks, the alts are probably going to break. All right. But if interest rates are coming off, which they're not right now, then that should be a positive. So we have to see. I don't know. You know, but I, I like to use Bitcoin as my guide. All right. So we're watching this trade unfold here. We will be able to send out our own emails. Right. Right. We will have a mechanism soon where, where we'll be able to handle all that. In a, in a more efficient way. But right now, you know, I have to do it this way. And so if you send it to me, I can, I can put, send you the invite. All right. So again, active investors. If you're not an active investor, then, you know, just what I suggest is you wait, just wait a couple of days. We'll have the registration process set up. I'll announce it on discord. All right. I not privately, I will announce it publicly. And you'll have a link to a page and you could sign up for your 14 day free trial. All right. So you guys get this so far. Tell me what you think in the chat. Do you guys understand what's going on here? Look at the trailing stop. Do you see like, so do you see like the, the main skill here is waiting? Do you see that? I don't have to do anything else. Just wait. So just trust the system. All right. I mean, so far, so good. Look at that. Okay. All right. Okay. So what I'll do is if it goes to, since I have the trailing stop on, if this thing goes to the take profit, I'll close half of my position and then I'll close the other half when it touches the trailing stop. All right, look, the trailing stop moved a little bit, but this, this gives you a beautiful reference and tells you, you know, if this thing runs, you now have a reference as to where to get out because people don't know where to get out. And I would say, well, we'll trail it manually and, and people don't know how to do that. Well, you don't have to know anymore. You just follow this thing because when price touches this thing, the orders will vanish. But again, respect the stops. If you don't respect the stops, you will have serious problems. You will wipe out your account. I can almost guarantee because you may take a position at a very inconvenient price location on the bigger picture and you may get caught in a big move against you. You must respect the stops. I can't repeat that enough times. Okay. Okay, cool. All right, Isaac, thanks. I've been listening to you for years now. I just want to hear you say that alts will go into the toilet. Ah, <laughs> you know, I'm not that. <laughs> I said that once. The alts will go into the toilet where they belong. A lot of them are garbage. Come on, PP -pee coin. Seriously, that's a garbage coin. You know, and the Shiba Inu. Oh, we're going to be billionaire with these stupid meme coins. Come on. Those, those coins do belong in the toilet. What value do they provide? They're just as bad as like these, these YouTubers that are famous, these, these like 20 year old kids that make like a million dollars, millions of dollars because their, their, their followers follow them. What value do these people provide? 
nothing, <laughs> nothing. Same with these altcoins. So in the toilet where they belong. Thank you for, for the reminder, Mr. Plow. Now, I know, I've, I know you've been following me for a while. I appreciate that. Now, look at this. This is not working out very well. This is a one-minute chart, though. So what, what can I expect in the time of day? So I'm hoping we can see like a nice little winner. But at this point, like what would I do? I'm back at break even. Should I get out of this trade? I'm going to let it touch the, the, the break even stop, the, uh, the trailing stop. I'm going to let it touch that, and then I'll get out. Now, what this does, if you notice, this was my original risk, right? Right? You see that, that blue rectangle there? My risk is now cut in half. I mean, yeah, it's still a losing trade if I get stopped out, but I'm taking half the risk. That is a really important thing. People will only look at, well, you're losing money. Yeah, but I'm losing less money than I would have, right? Which means over time, if I'm catching moves that go to their take profit, but I'm only losing half of what I risk, that basically doubles my reward risk, right? Instead of one and a half to one, which is what this is. This is one and a half times this, right? This, this, this section here is one and a half times larger than this section. Over time, if I'm only losing half of my initial risk, that means when I win, I'm winning double what I'm risking, right? Or whatever. Does that make sense? Because I'm only risking half. Now it gets, it gets even smaller. Look, I haven't done anything yet, right? I'm just letting the market do its thing and letting the orders do their thing. That's all you have to do here is watch, okay? There's nothing else. A lot of these other tools that are out there, I notice they give you like some kind of thing you have to look at and you have to interpret this and you have to figure out where the trade is and you have to do that. There's none of that here. The idea here is simplicity, right? The system is figured out for you. You're taking the same trade for the same reason every single time, which is a serious problem with beginner, especially beginner traders. They don't do that. They take trades for all variety of reasons, right? And that doesn't help you in the long run. When you're taking, especially day trades, you should be taking the same trade for the same reason every single time. This is a momentum-based system. So if there's no momentum, this is what's going to happen, okay? Um, and that's this is the way it is. So let's see if this thing is probably going to get tapped out, and I'm going to take a, a, a smaller loss here as this, as this thing gets closer and closer. Look, I'm going to prepare to get out. It's going to touch. There it is. Out. I'm out of my position, okay? So, I mean, I took a small loss there. All right. If I get another signal, I'll try it again. How much time we got? Yeah, I got, I got a little time. Let's see if we get another signal. But, you know, so far, this wasn't really worth – it was worth a little something, but it turned around on me, and I, I, I took a small loss. What do you expect on a one-minute chart? Okay. Um, this is not a good time of day either. But I, I'm just trying to demonstrate how this thing works. Let me show you this too. You see this over here? See this on the settings panel? It says reward ratio. You see that? Reward ratio. See that right here? That's where I can set my reward risk. I'm setting the reward ratio portion of it. So right now it says 1.5. That's the standard setting. Okay. I can change this to two or I can change it to three. I can change it to one if I want to do just one to one reward risk. Here, oh, look, we got a new signal. This is now two to one because I put the number two in there. All right, so let's put another. Let's try it again. All right. Now let me turn the trailing stop off there. Oh, I see. So because I have the trailing stop on, the trailing stop is still there. All right, I don't want that. So let me turn that off. All right, because we just got this new signal. Oh, so it's the same. Steen, what is this? It's the same signal. I just got back into the trade. I thought it was a new signal. I guess because it closed below the trailing stop. All right, so this this trade this trade actually shouldn't be. I thought that was a new signal. All right, time to get out again. Um, so, Steen, how, why does that do that? All right, like this is this is the old trade because look at the look at where it says sell over here, right? So that's not a new signal. It got reinitiated because you changed. Oh, okay. See, I'm learning how to use this thing too. And it's my system. <laughs> All right. So it got reinitiated because I changed the reward risk. Interesting. All right. So we'll put it back to 1.5. Okay. See, you see it move? You see this thing move over here? 
So the point is you, you can change that. You can control that based on your preferences. So the trailing stop only starts on the new calculation. Ah, so it, need, it needs a new trade. Okay, so this is not a new trade. This is the old trade. Okay. You guys follow that so far? Any questions? I mean, what do you guys think? Does it look compelling? I mean, I find this tool to be immensely useful because it takes so much off the table. You don't have to figure out orders anymore. You don't have to figure out how to trail things anymore. It gets you in the same trade for the same reasons every single time. Now, where this can be even more helpful is if you understand context, right? You should never really trust a script blindly like this. It helps if you understand context. Like, for example, you know, we're taking these shorts over here, right? I mean, this area up here, if I, if I go to a bigger picture, let's go to like a 15-minute chart, right? Are we, are we at like a resistance level? Are we at a support level? Where are we on this thing? I mean, Bitcoin's pulled back. It looks like our resistance is up in here somewhere, right? I'm getting short signals here that are not following through. But the thing is, as Bitcoin pushes up into this area, you know, and maybe by tonight, by like 8 p.m. or something like that, the Asian Open, maybe we get some more momentum. And this is still a decent area for shorts. OK, um, now, if Bitcoin continues to push up in that area, if it continues, the trend is going to change to bullish. Right. But that's not an area where I really want to take longs. So in a situation like that, I can put this into counter trend mode, right? Counter trend mode will look for trades that are against the trend. See how that trade went away? Because I put counter trend mode on. So now counter trend mode, since the trend is bearish, this thing will look for longs, okay, not shorts. The trend is bearish right now, but we have a conflicting mode going on. Um, but the trend is bearish. So if I'm in, so in counter trend mode, it's not going to look for the shorts. Right? I take counter trend mode off. And it's showing me the short that, that from before, which, which failed. Okay, went to the trailing stop. So if I keep this trade on my chart like this until a new signal appears, if I keep this trade on my chart, okay, either the stop has to be touched, okay, um, or, or if the trailing stop is touched, it needs a new trade to show new lines. This trade, I can still consider this trade still in play, meaning if we go below the blue line again, I'll try it again. Okay, like I like I tried over here and then it turned on me and I got out, but I'll try it again. That's a little more aggressive. But again, this is a one minute chart. You know, I, I would love to show this like on another time frame. What is this? A three minute here? Now look at this. It touched the three minute, it activated a trade on the three minute and completely went against it. Okay. So, you know, time of day, a few things could be a, a, in play here. Now if you notice, like up here, like I said, the market is conflicted because we're getting this bullish movement in a trend that still appears to be bearish. So that can also help you expect less. Maybe in situations like this, if you have conflict and you're getting a trade, maybe instead of putting two contracts on, you only put one. You see, so if you're wrong, you lose less because you're in conflict. Does that make sense? I could talk about this for hours. Whenever you change a setting, it gets recalculated and then thinks that you are just starting to follow the trailing stop. Okay, so Steen, see what Steen says here? So now most of you don't have this. So most of you are like, okay, it's maybe hard to follow along because you don't have the script. But I'm going to demonstrate this regularly so you guys get used to it. We should make a... <laughs> no, no, Steen, we, no, we should make... Alex had some good ideas for coins. Yes, Dean says we should make a coin named after me. But I like Alex's ideas, right? Toilet paper coin. I think that's a cool idea. What was the other one he had? He had another one. There was toilet paper coin, and then there was another coin he had, which was pretty funny. I thought those were good ideas. All right. Um, all right, so any questions? How many of you guys, just put it in the chat, how many of you guys are interested in signing up for the 14-day free trial? I'm just curious. Put a one in the chat. Let me know. 
Maybe no one's interested in signing up, Stian. I don't know. Let me know. Any guys interested? It's not available yet, but I'd just like to know. Anyone interested in signing up for the 14-day free trial? Putting this thing on your chart and, and seeing if some signals work out for you here? Again, this is a bad time of day to show this thing, but you know, I want to show something. So here's what I'll do. I'll wait a little bit more. If we take out this, if we take out this blue line again, I'll short it again on the three minute this time. Let's put the trailing stop back on. Is the trailing stop active on this thing? Let's see. No trailing stop. Okay, cool. Anyone? Who else is listening besides Steen? Look, it repainted. You see that? Who else? Who else is listening besides Steen? I'm going to try this again here. Let's do two. Anyone? I got 37 people watching, apparently. Who's interested in the free trial? So when I announce this in, in a few days, no one's going to sign up for it? Maybe, maybe there's a delay here. Maybe they don't like that this thing, I keep showing losing trades. But you know, what do you want at 4 o'clock in the afternoon on a one-minute or on a three-minute chart? This is, these are not really worthwhile trades to begin with. This is not a good time of day. When you day trade, time of day is extremely important. You know, if this was 9.30 a.m. Eastern time, we would probably have better results or at least see more momentum. All right, I'm not seeing anything. Anyone have any questions? This is two to one reward risk, right? I think I said I left that at two to one. Oh, no, it's at one and a half to one. Okay. This is on a three-minute chart. How? What price is this here? 62,826. This may take a while to get there. I'm probably not going to wait that long. You should do videos. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll certainly do some more videos and like training videos and, and things like that. And also um, trade videos where you can see a, a real a, a, a trade at a more appropriate time of day and see how this thing works. I mean, I've messed with this thing like on a Saturday afternoon at like, you know, three o'clock Eastern time. For, for some reason, Bitcoin is very active around that time. And I've had some interesting trades. Um, especially like on, I, I, I've gone on sub one minute time frames, which is not something I would recommend. I've gone to like 15 second, 30 second, and they're very fast time frames. But I had one instance where I caught a trailing, a trailing stop just kept me in the trade. And based on my risk, I captured like an eight to one reward risk. It equated to like 400 points or something like that, but I never capture eight to one reward risk. Okay. This thing, by having a trailing stop, it opens up that possibility where normally you would not take a trade like that or hold it that long. Okay. Again, this is a bad time of day. I mean, look at this thing. This thing is not really doing anything. Um, yeah. So is anyone here besides Stian? Maybe a hello in the chat? Something? Stian, I don't think any, uh, these, maybe these are bots watching me. Maybe this is a bot. I don't know. What do you think? Come on. Steen's the only one typing anything. There we go. All right. So you guys, cool. Got some people. Are you, would you guys be interested in a 14-day free trial? It's free. I'm just curious. Would you guys sign up for a 14-day free trial? It's not available yet, but I just want to know. Just trying to collect some feedback. And if you say no, I'd like to know why. Like, you know, what, what, what is not cool about this? Because I think this is a pretty amazing tool. Malad, you'd sign up? Okay, you guys would sign up? Maybe all the impersonators. That could be Steen. Only impersonators are watching me. They're like, yeah, we got to copy him so that we can uh, fool his, his followers. Cool. You guys like? All right, cool, cool. I mean, I, I think that, again, of course, it's my system. So I, I think it's great. But the, the value here is really, again, removing the burden of analysis and simplifying the whole process for you. So you don't have to think. You don't have to do anything. You just wait. Waiting is pretty easy to do. You could do something else and just set up the notification. I'm the guy that let me ran the other week, if you remember. Oh, sure. I remember. Oh, yeah, I remember your profile. Yeah, I remember you. I remember you. Sure. And I appreciate your honesty. 
No, I'm not a, I'm not an, I'm not a, a ST trader. An ST trader. Okay. I'm not sure what that means. How long do you think the Bitcoin correction process will take? Um, no idea. I mean, correction process, it depends on what time frame. Are you talking about this time frame? Not that long. But, you know, you're talking on the big picture, like the analysis we we're talking about before. A, a real correction, because we haven't seen a real correction yet. This move that we see on Bitcoin right now, this general move, this is not a real correction. This is just noise. We're just at the bottom of a range. A real, collect, a, a real corrective move can unfold over three to six months. That would be a real corrective move. Okay. What we've seen recently is, is baby stuff. That's not a real corrective move based on, on the larger magnitude. I mean, I showed the monthly chart before. You saw that red candle forming on the monthly chart. We're still at the beginning of the month. But if that thing closes red, you may be looking at a few months of corrective move. Okay. Oh, yeah, Monica. Right, Monica. Yes, you've recently signed up. Yes. So, so Monica, uh, send me a private message with your trading view username. I need your trading view username to send you the invite. Okay. Oh, short time frame. Kai, thank you. Maybe that's what that. Oh, short time frame. Okay. Well, you know what, Amir? You don't have to trade this on one minute charts or three minute like I'm showing you here. You don't have to. You can actually trade this on a daily time frame or a four hour time frame. In fact, my trade scanner classic, the bot that sends out the emails, which is this, which is based on, which this is based on, that works on a four hour time frame primarily, right? That's why it sends out, you know, a few trades a week, basically, per asset class. Um, weather is good. Yeah, Malad, yeah. I was going to mention, yeah, the weather is nice again. So um, I'd like to put something together for the city. But, man, the city's rough these days, man. I, I, how are you doing over there? Because maybe it's me. Maybe I'm just watching too many YouTube videos, maybe fake gurus in the city talking about how bad the city is. But, man, I've been seeing some bad videos about New York City and what's going on there right now. So I don't know. I don't know. But maybe it's maybe it's like, you know, when you watch too much like, you know, CNN, and then you, you, they make you think one thing, and maybe it's that. Maybe the city's not that bad. But I don't know. It looks pretty bad. Um, I mean, have things changed much for you, or is it pretty much the same? I got. I met Milad once. Uh, you can use every – right. So, so you can – like, again, you could – Amir, you could use this. Like, for example, if you want to go to, like, a daily time frame, right? You could use this on a daily time frame. This is a daily. And this will give you big picture trades, like swing trades, like really big picture trades. Now, on the daily time frame, look, we have an orange candle here. See that? That's a, that's a, that's a heads up that a trade may be showing up in the next few days. That's what that means. The next few days, maybe a week on that time frame. Look at this. I mean, there was an orange candle here, right? The heads up. So, and, and, as you can see, I've been talking about going long, you know, in this area. So you could use this on a four-hour chart. You know, you could use this on an eight-hour chart. You could use this on an odd time frame if you want to. It's up to you. You 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 shape it to your needs. Okay, let's go back to the three minute. You shape this to your needs. Okay, that's the whole point. See, one of the problems with the trade scanner classic or feedback that I got is people like the, the signals would come out in the middle of the night when they're sleeping, you know, or they're at work, they don't have time. This was made to solve that problem. This was made so that you can cater it to your own schedule. So for example, you know, if you don't have time or, or you want maybe sl slightly more signals in the four hour chart, you could do this on a one hour chart. And you don't have to sit here, Amir. You don't have to sit here and watch the chart like we are. This is a waste of time, in my opinion. Okay, all you have to do is set up a notification, right? You go here, you set up a notification like this, all right? You, and you, you, tell it, you tell it how you want to receive the notification, and then you go about your business and go do something else, and you wait until a trade shows up, right? If you have it on your smartphone, on a tablet, whatever, it pops up, and you're all set. Place the orders, and then watch it, check it every once in a while. You have to make sure you respect the stop, okay? But anyway... Um, 
Uh, Milad, I, I, maybe, maybe, maybe these videos are exaggerating a bit. Maybe, maybe I'm getting fooled by the fake gurus. Um, okay. No, but I mean, I've been seeing things that just like, man, I don't remember city being like that. I used to work there. I mean, I used to spend a lot of time there. Uh, read your book and learn the candlesticks from you. Also, mindset. I would use it on a weekly. You can, Amir. You could use it on a weekly. You could use it on a monthly. You're not going to get lots of signals, but again, you cater it to your needs, right? That's that's the whole that's the whole point here. You cater it to what's what's best for you. That's why we built this. That's why that was the idea behind putting this together. You know, I asked the community. I'm going to wrap this up in a minute. But I asked the community a month ago, I said to the community, we can build a script right, of the trade scanner where it will take the trades for you, but means you have to have a buy bid account and all this other stuff. Or we can build a trading view script so that you could take it upon yourself and work with this on your own. Everyone voted for the script. So here it is. Steen put it together. Look at this trades working out nice. Now, you see, I mean, is this hard to do? Like, it told me to get short. The trailing stop is doing its job. This thing is working its way toward the take profit. I mean, am I, how am I not in this trade? I thought I took the trade. I don't see, I'm, I don't think I'm in it here. Uh, have I, for, I thought I took this. Anyway, if I had taken this here, as you can see, I was like, how come I'm not seeing my numbers over here? It looks like I'm not short. You know what? I'm just going to short one anyway. I'm going to short it. I should have been short from here. This is a really bad price to short it. But let's see if we go to the take profit. Let's see if we go there. What I, what I, shorting it here, again, is not what you do. You're supposed to short it here at the blue line. Okay? But might as well, you know, it's paper. Who cares? All right? But let's just see. Now, the trailing stop is still my risk. I, I still have risk in this trade if I'm going to go by the trailing stop. Nice, nice. We're almost there. Look at that. This would have been beautiful if I had taken it at the right price. You know, and once again, you had some warning. Right? You had a heads up. You see that? The orange candle sitting there? Right? The orange candle told us that a trade may be coming soon. There's another orange candle right here. You see that? So you, you had some warning on this. Okay? That's the whole idea of the heads up. So let's see if we go to the let's go, let's see if we go to the uh, take profit, and then I'll I'll get out. I'm up two hundred and forty five dollars on paper, and I took this at a bad price. I took this short like here. Okay, I took this at a horrible price. I should have been short up here. I guess I forgot I was talking too much. All right, let's see if it goes there. In fact, I'm going to close one since I got that profit. This is what you do when you short it from a bad price. I closed one because I'm short from a bad price to begin with. Okay. And if it goes to the take profit, I'll close the second one. Or maybe I'll try, I'll try to let the trailing stop take over. Right. So because the trailing stop is active, because I turned this on, because again, remember, you could turn this on or off. Because this is on, and you can see it on the chart, the trailing stop, the price, if it goes below the take profit, the trade will still stay on your chart. It won't vanish, okay? It'll stay on your chart, and the trailing stop will then be active, right? And the only, the only time the trade will vanish is when the trailing stop is touched. Now, if you don't want that, you could turn that off, right? But if we're going to see it, all I have to do is go here, is turn, turn, click on trailing stop. And the trailing stop goes away. See that? And now, now the, the, the take profit and the stop loss are the orders that are in play. But if I put the trailing stop back on, then the green line here, which is the take profit, that, that won't make the trade go away. It's up to me to get out there. All right, it's a good thing I got out of one. Cool. But you see how that works? So... This, you know, I made a mistake here. I should have been up a lot more because I should have been short from here. But instead, I shorted it like here, right? Horrible price. And you could see what's happening here. That's why I got out of one. All right. Now, this, this thing was like $250 in my favor. I, I locked in one for a profit. 
Now this thing's like $100 against me, okay? And this thing may go all the way up to the stop and tap me out, and I'm going to be losing like two dollars or $300, right, which is ridiculous. Again, this is on paper. This is not real, but this trade should have been a nice trade at a really bad time of day. This trade, I should have been up a few hundred dollars here at least. I mean, I was I shorted this candle and I was up like 250, right? If I had shorted up here where I should have shorted, I'd probably be up like $500 or more, something like that at a really bad time of day. Again, this is a three minute chart. If this was a one minute chart, I probably would have been out a while ago. But you see how the market bounces, right? I mean, there's, there's a lot of, this happens. But if this momentum stays intact, you know, we should touch this, this takes profit. And then the trailing stop basically takes over, right? And I could just follow the trailing stop and the trailing stop will keep moving lower until it gets touched, right? So let's see, what time is it? Okay, a couple more minutes now. I know I I'm, I've been talking a lot longer than I normally do, but I want to demonstrate this thing and I want you guys to see this thing firsthand, okay? I want, I want you to, to, to get a good feel for this. Again, it will be available soon. Um, if you're an active investor right now, like Monica and, and, and Isaac from before, you just send me or like Isaac put his name in, in his profile. The trade I need your trading view username in order to send you the invite. Okay. And when I send the invite, I, I don't, I'm not sure if it sends you a notification. So you have to check to see if you have the script. You, you go up here to this thing up here and then you click on, uh, invite only scripts and that's where it should be okay for my active investors um okay cool so any questions so again you know if you're just joining the stream or you're just checking out what's going on here if you're wondering how this works right it's a momentum based trend following system it's a, it's, a, it's, it's a trend following momentum reversal system. That's what I meant to say. And all that means is it looks for a trend. Okay. In this case, the trend is defined as bearish, right? That's what it says up here on the label. It looks for a bearish trend. And then it looks for pullbacks on that bearish trend, right? Pullbacks. You see the pullbacks? It looks for pullbacks. And then it measures the amount of the pullback. And when certain criteria are met, it sends a signal. It generates a signal. And that signal is a set of order suggestions. That's what these horizontal lines are, order suggestions, right? And then you have to decide if you want to follow them or not. The blue line is where you enter. The green line is where you exit. And the red line is where you take your loss. And the, the orange line here is your trailing stop. The biggest skill that you have to have to use this is to wait. Wait for a signal, okay? We've even talked about... Um, one of the updates that we're going to do at some point is we're going to create a table, right? And the table will like, it'll appear like somewhere on the chart like this. It'll be like a table. And on that table, you'll be able to input your own symbols. So let's say Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, let's say a stock, uh, Euro dollar. Let's just say these are your own symbols. You'll be able to input up to like 10 symbols, right? And then across on that table, right, across the table, you're going to have, right, like your symbols will be over here, right? And then you're going to have time frames across the top. So it'll be like one minute, five minute, 15 minute, 30 minute. And then what it'll tell you, so you don't have to pull up the chart, it'll tell you if a signal appears or not, like on what time frame. So maybe the signal shows up on the one minute, okay, or on the three minute or whatever. It'll pop up on the table. So now... You could be like, oh, cool. And then you could just go over to the chart and it's there instead of sitting there watching the chart. And you should be able to set notifications on that too. That's an update that it's going to take some time to develop, but that's one of the update ideas that, that we're talking about. Okay. I think that would be really cool because you don't have to sit in front of the screen anymore. You could just set that thing up and the thing goes blip. Oh, cool. There's a, there's a trade on the three minute. I'll, I'll go there now and, and put the orders in and then go about do, doing whatever else you were doing before that. Or maybe something pops up on a 30 minute or something pops up on an hourly or whatever. And like, oh, cool. Because otherwise you would have missed it. Look, I'm not watching the euro right now. I'm not watching Litecoin. I'm not watching whatever, a stock. I'm not watching any of those things. I'm watching Bitcoin on a three minute chart. 
So imagine there's signals occurring in other markets on other time frames, possibly right now, and they may be good. Okay. So that will really open up uh, the door to um, trades. Maybe like, like Amir, maybe you don't want to work on such small time frames. Maybe you only want to pay attention to the larger time frames daily, weekly. You know, we'll have those on there. I don't know about monthly, but daily, daily for sure. Okay, but like a guy like Amir, Amir would be working with four hour and daily, possibly weekly. So signal goes off there. Maybe he's watching 10 symbols. Oh, I got a signal on the euro. Oh, I got a signal on, uh, you know, British pound or whatever. Whatever you watch, it's up to you. You decide that. Okay, this isn't working very well, obviously. But now look, so I, I blew out of one. Now I'm taking a loss on this one because I wasn't in early, I wasn't in at the right price. If I had gotten in at the right price, like I should have, instead of talking, Right. If I had gotten in at the right price, I'd basically be breaking even on that second lot. And I would have locked in something on my first lot because I got out early. OK. Per symbol, you will be able to set the time frame you want to monitor. Oh, so Steen is saying you could set the time frame. I, I was imagining fixed time frames like, you know, you're going to have the one minute the five minute, whatever, whatever, whatever. Steen is saying you can input your time frames. So you decide what time frames you want to monitor. Cool. See, Steen is always a step ahead. He's, he's always thinking ahead. Cool. That's cool. So now look, my stop went to break even. You see that? Basically. So if I was in from this price like I should have been, uh, essentially, this is a risk-free trade. Right? You say, well, how is it risk-free? You're losing all this money. Well, no, because this would have been profit that I'm giving back. It's not a loss, right? A loss would have been here. All right? Does that make sense? Make sense, you guys? Okay, so that's pretty much it with this. <clears throat> Again, press the like button, press the subscribe button on the YouTube channel. That's always helpful. Make sure you check out Market Signals Pro and just give me a couple of days. OK, give us a few days and we'll have the registration page up. I will put an announcement in the community. Um, you know, I'll make sure people know that the registration is available and you can sign up for a 14 day free trial and you can decide for yourself. You, you know, you configure this thing for your own needs. You decide for yourself if it's useful or not. If you find it useful, all you do is stay on board and you'll be billed after 14 days and you'll be billed every month after that if you do the monthly or if you do the yearly you know you'll have that option as well otherwise if you cancel within the 14 days which is very easy to do you go to your user dashboard you cancel you will not be billed okay it's very easy to do all right you guys so if you have any other questions you can send me an email you can reach out to me um on on the community and like i said before i don't reach out to you initially so please be careful with scammers um, if you get a private message from me on Twitter or anywhere else, it's not me. Block them and report them. And please tell other people so that they know that there's a scammer active. All right. So everyone, thank you for watching. I hope you got something out of this. Enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your evening, wherever you are in the world. And thank you again for watching.